Yes, my friends, it's time we tackle the white build on the channel. And even though it's definitely been done before, I hope we can make ours stand out from the crowd. Let's find out. The perfect white build is kind of a unicorn. Usually some little detail or accent gets in the way and you end up with a mostly white build. This is just not how hardware is made. It's rare to find a component that's entirely white from head to tail. And finding a whole system's worth of stuff is very difficult to say the least. So our white build today is going to be one of those systems that almost gets there. It'll be predominantly white with some black accents to go along with it. We'll start off looking at our parts choices with the Corsair Crystal 570X. Corsair actually does make a white version of this case, but this isn't one of them. If you guys remember last year, I put together my Dark Crystal water cooling project in here, a custom powder coated frame that was originally all black. Of course, a month after I did this, the white version became available on Newegg, but I'm definitely not bitter about that at all. The only parts that I couldn't whiteify in here were the plastic bits like the corner brackets and grommets and also the drive caddies around back. Still though, because of its pure white powder coated finish and all glass exterior panels, I think this will be a great place to start our build. Mounting to the tray of our 570X will be MSI's new B360 Gaming Arctic. A white PCB and some slick silver accents will go perfectly with our theme. And it even has some white LED action going on as well. Even though the fans that we'll take a look at in a second actually come with a white LED, if they were RGB, we could control them with MSI's Mystic Light and sync up all of our lighting effects anyway. The new B360 chipset is the perfect home for our processor of choice today, the Intel i5-8400. Since the launch of Coffee Lake, the 8400 has been without a proper home as the Z370 chipset motherboard offers a lot that you guys can't really take advantage of with a locked SKU chip. With B360 now released, you can find good, fully featured motherboards for an actual reasonable price. This will be my first time wor working with a Coffee Lake build without a Z370 motherboard, and it's good to finally be recommending something that isn't overkill for what we're doing. I never know how to pronounce the name of our memory selection, but Jail or Guile or Gale or whatever makes some pretty sweet looking dims. These are the Super Luce RGB, and we'll be using a 2x8 gigabyte kit of DDR4-3000. I featured these in my RGB memory roundup video, but I don't think I've ever actually used them in a system before. Hopefully there's no issues. Maybe the coolest part of April's monthly build is the graphics card, sent over to me by Galax. This is the GTX 1070 Ti EX Sniper White. Galax is one of the only GPU manufacturers out there consistently putting out almost all of their products in a white trim if you want them. And for this generation, they've added an RGB LED accent trim, poking out from underneath the backplate and running almost the entire perimeter of the card. As with all 1070 Ti models, it comes with clock speeds of 1607 base and 1683 boost out of the box because this is the way Nvidia decreed it shall be. But with Galaxy's custom PCB, redesigned power delivery, and significantly improved cooler with twin 100 millimeter fans, I'm thinking higher clock speeds aren't just a possibility, they're almost a certainty. Once we get everything assembled and tested, I'll talk more about overclocking and temperatures. Rounding out the white build are a couple of non-white parts that will be hidden underneath the shroud and also around back of our case. The EVGA 650G3 power supply is the model of consistency and efficiency among units in this price range and wattage. I've used it many times before and never once had an issue. Our OS and benchmarking software will be stored on the Kingston A400 480GB SSD. There were some options out there for silver SSDs, namely the Crucial MX500, but I couldn't get one of those here in time for this build. Also, I'm not really particularly worried since it'll be sitting in a black drive sled anyway, and it'll be around back. However, I did pick up one of Silverstone's white SATA data cables, which should fit in nicely. And also I got this awesome set of extensions from the one and only Ensource Customs. This is probably the most basic color scheme you can ask Joey to sleeve up for you, 
but the high quality sleeving and pure white material are just what the doctor ordered. We're gonna top everything off with our cooling solution and fans. The i5-8400 will be handled by the Deepcool Captain 240EX White. I've said in the past that the design of the block top isn't really my favorite, but trying to find a white AIO is like hunting for Bigfoot, and given its strong reputation and solid build quality, I'm willing to give the Captain a chance here. We still will, however, be swapping out the black and white fans, as well as the fans on the front of the case with six of Enermax's Cluster Advance White. These have an all white construction as well as white LEDs around the housing. I actually gave some thought to going with an RGB variety of fan, as I really do like that look inside of an otherwise white system, but I stuck to my guns and kept everything whitewashed. So let's see if this build comes together like I'm picturing it in my head. Mobile 
managed to assemble a system that not only looks great, but performs at an exceptionally high level and stays remarkably cool under load as well. I think we could attribute this to a couple of factors. First, the 570X case is basically an open air enclosure and it's almost impossible to find a better airflow situation outside of a completely open test bench. The three front intake fans kept pumping air over basically our entire system and all the components. So they were never recirculating warm exhaust. And our deep cool Captain AIO is admittedly overkill for an i5-8400 processor. Even at 100% load, the CPU didn't get any warmer than 48 Celsius. So there was definitely no throttling happening and we can know that our benchmark results are true. I did overclock both the GPU and the memory though, allowing for better in-game performance across the board. Our DDR4 cruised along at 3000 megahertz without any issues, and I was able to dial in 175 megahertz core overclock and 150 megahertz memory offset on our Galax 1070 Ti. Even with the increased clock speeds, this card's more substantial cooler meant that at load while gaming, the GPU hovered between 70 and 72C. It was also remarkably quiet as the fans didn't even spin most of the time unless I put some kind of a graphical strain on the system. I'm gonna take a look at this card in more detail in a full review on the channel in a couple of weeks. A few build notes here. I really wish the Captain 240 cooler came with white tubing as the block is white, the radiator is white, and even the fans that come with it are mostly white. Black tubing, why exactly? I guess I could have gone with something like the Enermax ETS T40, which does come with an all white option and would definitely have provided sufficient thermal dissipation here. Live and learn, I guess. Also, you can see here and in the B-roll shots that I didn't install a rear exhaust. This was for a few reasons, but to be honest, it was mainly because the tubing from the AIO ended up snaking all the way back and would have contacted the fan blades. I could have spun things around and had the tubes going the other direction, but this would have covered up our cables and memory, which really contribute to our color scheme while the black tubing kind of contrasts. So I left it as is. I don't think this really in any way affects thermals and considering that dust is gonna enter all around the perimeter anyway, it probably won't contribute much to that problem either. April's build is a wrap. What do you guys think of our first white build for the channel? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, don't forget to get subscribed to the channel if you are not already, and hit that little bell icon if you wanna be notified for future videos. As always, guys, I hope you enjoyed this content, and I'll see you next time.